Hello and welcome to Locusts and Wild Honey, episode 9. As you've just seen, today's episode is about humility and something about language. And I want to do the something about language first before we get on to this week's topic, humility. Our language is something that's always evolving. Words and phrases come into use and they go out of use. Some drop out of use completely and other words and phrases are invented as time goes by. There are a couple of words that I could think of right away that in my lifetime have had the meaning extended. The words gay and wicked. Those are two of the words that are very much used these days that uh, meaning something really rather different to what they meant when I was a boy. Uh, and this just shows how uh, language does evolve as the years go by. Now if we're not careful we can uh, use language in a very restricted way. Uh, lots of the words that we use, we can use in a restricted way. And I think we, we tend to do that uh, in the church. We have a tendency to think uh, in fairly confined terms when we think about particular words. And one or two of the words that I'm thinking about now are words like sin and repentance and penitence. Those three words have meanings which uh, are given a very focused meaning, in, uh, I think, uh, in the church. Or at least people outside of church uh, think that they mean something which is very restricted. Whereas in the church the meaning can be taken as being really quite wide. For instance, the word sin. We perhaps all think of it about, uh, as something which describes our doing wrong. Uh, sin, uh, the sins are the things that we do wrong. Well, the word sin actually has a much broader meaning than that. The Greek word that it comes from uh, means something like missing the mark. So it's not just things that uh, we do wrong, but it's a whole range of other things uh, which take in the idea that we are not quite living up to the mark. We're not quite getting there in the way that we would lead our life ideally. So you see, the meaning of the word sin is really quite, quite a bit broader than uh, we use it in perhaps in an everyday way. The word repentance actually is one of the themes that overarches the whole of the Lent season. I'm not going to say much more about that word today um, because we'll meet it time and time again in the six weeks of Lent and I'll explain a bit more about it then. But you see what I mean when I say that words, we, we, we have to be careful how we use words because sometimes we restrict their meaning when they can, uh, they can have much wider meanings. And if we use them with those much wider meanings, it can be far more enlightening for us uh, than if we use them in a restricted way. So as we come to this word humility today, I'd like us to look at that. The second Sunday in this series, uh, season of preparation for the season of Lent in the Orthodox Church is entitled the, the Sunday, the second Sunday, is the Sunday of the Publican and Pharisee. Uh, publican meaning tax collector. And it's taken from that passage in St Luke's Gospel where Jesus talks about, uh, uh, gives the parable about the tax collector and the Pharisee. And if you don't mind, I'm going to read it to you because I think it is worth reading. It's from St Luke chapter 18 and it begins at verse 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, 
God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. So in this second week, as we think about those two men offering their prayers to God, one, the Pharisee, being very proud of his religious observance, always keeping the law, but being very proud of that, sticking out his chest as it were, and in a sense showing off how good he was at his religion, contrasts with the tax collector, who actually uh, has a different relationship with God. He's very conscious of how he it misses the mark when it comes to religion, probably misses the mark in his day-to-day -day life as he thinks about uh, what his day-to-day -day life is like as he offers it before God. And he stands as far away as he can, sort of at the back of the church, if you like, um, as he offers his prayers, rather than going right up to the front, right up to the altar. So there's a contrast there between the two men and how they approach God. One very proud, one very humble. And Alexander Schmemann picks up uh, this uh, idea of humility in this week in, as preparation for the season of Lent. Preparation for thinking about the whole subject of repentance. Now as we think about what I was just saying about language and how it changes, let's look at this word humility and how it might empower us more than perhaps it does. When we think of a humble person, what do we think of? What sort of person do we normally think of? I looked up the word humble in Chambers Dictionary, the one that I bought 40, uh, 30 years ago before I started theological college uh, to help me in my studies. And in Chambers Dictionary, one of the def definitions of the word humble is to have a low opinion of oneself. And I think that's really uh, rather uh, demeaning in some, in some respects, and I, I'll, I'll say why. I don't think that it's a good thing to have a low opinion of ourselves. God has a far higher opinion of us than we would perhaps even dream of, even hope for. We are the crown of creation, we're told in the Bible. We are the best thing, in a sense, that God uh, has, uh, has created. And God has a higher opinion of each and every one of us that any of us could have about one another or indeed about ourselves. But if we have this low opinion of ourselves, if we think that we are nothing compared to others, that we are lower than others, uh, lower, uh, less important than anyone else, or less important than the rest of creation, then I think that that is actually, in some respects, sinful. Because it's not the way that God thinks of us. God puts us, puts us all on a much higher level than that. It puts us all on an equal level. Whoever we are, in the sight of God, we are all equal. None of us are lower than anyone else. And I would like to extend the meaning of this word humble, or the word humility, in such a way that rather than putting us down, if you see what I mean, that it actually empowers us. 
Now we think if we think about uh, the word, the Latin word humus, which I think the word humble comes from, and the word humility comes from. The word humus means earth. And so I think being humble is someone who is really grounded. Someone who's got their feet on the ground. Someone who knows where they are. Someone who knows who they are. It's someone, and not in comparison with anybody else, but a fully self-aware. Someone, a humble person is someone who knows their strengths, who knows their weaknesses, and who responds to life in, in that way of self-knowledge. Knowing what they can do, knowing what they can't do, knowing what they might do, knowing what they knowing what they certainly can do and especially in their response to other people always being aware of other people and the way in which they relate to other people and if we want to uh, become anything at all remember last week we talked about desire in the last episode we talked about the desire the desire we have to become whatever it is that we want to become if, we, if there's something that we want to become in our day-to-day -day life or in our spiritual life, we know to, need to know who we are and where we are right now, so that we know what we have to do to get there. So if we're self-aware, that really is the best starting point for wherever it is that we want to get. To be self-aware is the be a best starting point for our relationship with God and our relationship with one another, with other people and our relationship with the whole of creation. We understand who and what we are in relation to, uh, to the rest of creation. Not that we have a low opinion of ourselves, like that character in Dickens who was ever so humble I'm just trying to remember his name, and I quite can't. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue. And I, it's one of those moments when Uriah Heep, that's it, Uriah Heep was ever so humble. Well, he was a creep, wasn't he? It's not that sort of humility, but it's a self awareness, an understanding of how we relate to and respond to God and one another and the whole of creation. And when we have that view of humility, when we look at being humble in those terms as being self-aware, knowing who and what we are, but on an equal footing with everyone else in creation, then that for me is the best starting point for anything and everything that we could do. So, this week, the parable of the publican and the Pharisee in St Luke chapter 18. Look it up, read it and come to some of your own conclusions about what the word humility means in relation to that, uh, that parable. Something about what Jesus meant in telling that parable to the people around him. Again, thank you for watching. Please do remember to share this video so that the word spreads. Uh, and uh, do like it if let me know that you like it if you do like it and also leave a comment I'd like to know what you think about this these words that we're coming up with this word humility uh, that we're thinking about this week next week we'll uh, we, we'll be meeting a couple of the most well-known characters in the Bible but I won't say any more about that uh, yet and next week I'm going to say a bit more about the Lent challenge uh, to just whet your appetite a bit. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!